Hello and welcome to Save Your Sanity. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler and I'm delighted you're here. If you've been here before, I'm glad you found value and you've come back. And if you're new, I'm so glad you found me. I hope you also find value and become a returning listener and watcher. <laughs> and if you find value here, you know you're always welcome to support the podcast by going to patreon.com slash save your sanity, patreon.com slash save your sanity. That helps to defray the costs and makes me even more excited about doing the show twice a week. So Tonight we're going to talk about something that is so very important and it kind of gets its tentacles around your soul and your heart and we have to figure it out. So tonight we're going to talk about how hijackals hook you and how to unhook, step away and see clearly what's going on because it's not that easy when you are emotionally hooked and you you tend to really want to believe that things are going to get better or that things were ever really good. And they might have been, they may well have been for a while, but we want to find out how hooked are we and what's hooking us and how can we change that so that we take back some sense of control in our life, that we have stepped back far enough to realize that maybe I've given away a bit too much here. Maybe I am constantly leaning in and going in the other person's direction and I'm always feeling like I'm about to tip. And that actually happens, right? You feel like you're just, oh, you're so worn down and torn down that you're exhausted and you feel like one more thing and I'm going to fall over. I can't do this anymore. So let's talk about how hijackals hook you and how to unhook and step away. Really, really important. <clears throat> so how do hijackals hook you? Well, they be what you want them to be when you first meet them. They are the ultimate chameleons. They scope you out, they sess you down, and then they are just the perfect human being. Do you remember that? Now, of course, if you were a baby when you met your parents and their hijackals, you thought they were perfect too. But I'm talking about romantic relationships and liaisons tonight. And when you first met them, you just thought, oh, they're perfect. They're wonderful. And they were working really hard at understanding what do you need? What do you want? What do you like? What do they need to say? How do they get you to come to me? Come to me. And they're in a rush. Have you noticed that? You think back on the time when your relationship began. Were they in a bit of a hurry? Did they say things like, oh, I know I just met you, but I love you and I know I'm going to marry you. Or they start future faking. They say, oh, you know, I think you would be the perfect person to build a house in, and have a farm and have a bunch of children. Don't you think that would be wonderful? Oh, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, they see potential. They see possibilities. They see perfection. Isn't this exciting? And they're slowly hooking you in. Do you remember any of that happening? Because when you're with a hijackal, that happened. It did. Unless you were with somebody who was just abusive from the beginning. And that's a whole other conversation that we won't be having tonight. But you know, they had lots of protestations of love and they appeared to listen to you. They appeared to be very interested in you. And you know what they were doing at that time? They were gathering intel. While they're listening to you, they oh, he or she likes this, or they like that, or they don't like this, or they're afraid of that, or this happened in their past. And they're putting it all into their brain to weaponize it, to use it on you later. Now I know I'm making them sound absolutely terrible, but I want you to really grasp the kinds of things these people will do. And it's just what they do. That's in their repertoire. And so they are endeavoring to get as much intel on you as possible, and it'll pop out later. And they will say things that you told them in greatest confidence, and then they'll say, oh, sorry. 
I was, oh, I made a mistake. They will weaponize it all. If you say you're afraid of something, they will come back and make fun of you for being afraid of it. So that's why they're listening so intently to figure out how to please you and how to get things rolling in their favor in the fastest amount of time. When you think back on the beginning of your relationship with a hijackal, did it go faster than you went in other relationships? Did you hear things that you didn't hear for months in a healthier relationship? Answer is probably yes, because they know how to hook you. And that's what they were working on. So <clears throat> they may have even started asking for exclusivity early on. They wanted to nail you down, call you away from the herd, take you away, make you theirs. And that can be a very heady experience. You may love that. You may think, oh, this is perfect. I've met my perfect person, my soulmate. And they may use language like that because they know you're waiting to hear that language. And so you go head over heels into the situation. And then when things start to go even a little bit sideways, you then make excuses and justify and rationalize their behavior. They're going through a bad patch, right? And so as the hijackal starts to show you their true colors, you start saying, oh, no, 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 everything is rosy. Everything is always rosy. <laughs> and it isn't. There was a little black there and a little puce over there. And you say, oh, no, let me just color it back over rosy. And that is unhelpful. And you're hooked on the hope that this person you're falling in love with is the real person. And because you want to be in a relationship and you're entering it in good faith, you give. Of course you give because that's what you do in a healthy relationship. And you collaborate and you accommodate and you cooperate and you compromise and you go the extra mile and you give them the benefit of the doubt. All those things, right? Of course, that's what you do. That's the way it rolls. And that's how they hook you. And they start in the premise that hope springs eternal. So if I painted this very rosy picture of me and the possibilities of our relationship that would take you over the moon and back, that you're going to hold on to that. You're going to say, oh, yes, that's the real thing. That is what they believe that is coming from their very core and you're changing and they're not but you go first and you change a little and accommodate and then you notice that they don't change maybe they even dig in a little deeper and then you're giving and they're taking but they're not giving anymore or you make a move and they they don't do a thing. So pretty soon it becomes inequitable. There is no equality in the relationship. And you may really believe in it and try your hardest and find when you step back that you're really settling for crumbs. Every little thing that looks like that person you first met and fall in love with, you go, oh, there they are, <clears throat> they're back. That's the person I fell in love with. And you get a little crumb here and a little crumb there. But, you know, crumbs do not stave off hunger for very long. Crumbs are not a meal. Crumbs will not satisfy. They just pacify. And that's a whole other matter, right? And so if you think to the beginning of your relationship, was it all that and a bag of chips you know was it ah oh, this is great this is wonderful this is what i've waited for this is what i've longed for this person seems to know me this person seems to anticipate my needs they're deeply interested in me they're very attentive yes that's lovely but then as that begins to turn and fade you have to believe that it's turning and fading and that's the hard thing, because you don't want to settle for those crumbs. Don't be settling for those crumbs. And if right now you're having that moment where you're thinking, really, I don't get much. 
You know, there are a few things, the crumbs. But when was the last time that you felt secure in the relationship, safe in the relationship, that things were reciprocal in the relationship, that there was some equity and equality going on? Just think about that. Because you may have been so giving that you failed to realize how little you were receiving and how it had gotten completely out of balance. Or maybe in your overgiving, you find that now you've, you've kind of become a pretzel. You don't even recognize who you are anymore because you have accommodated so much that you've made yourself into a pretzel. And then after a while, you may find that sadly, you become a bit of a doormat and that's what they want. They want you to be underfoot. They want you to be in, that they have ultimate control over you. And so what they do, they put you down, they tear you down, they wear you down so that you will be a shadow of your former self and they will have control because you are exhausted. And then things get worse. Just when you thought they couldn't possibly get worse, they get worse. And don't get caught in that hope springs eternal thing because it doesn't have to. And I want to help you understand how to unhook because this is essential. You know, I know you may find yourself just rushing in to justify and rationalize their behavior or make excuses for their behavior. Don't do it. Give yourself some time during this broadcast to say, let me look at this with fresh eyes, not with rose colored glasses, because what you're seeing over and over and over are red flags. And every time you put on your rose colored glasses, you don't see them. So it's time to whip off those rose colored glasses and see what's actually there. It is not that person you fell in love with. That person doesn't exist. The real person is the one who's causing you stress now. And you may not want to let go of that idealized version that you remember so well. And there are reasons for that. Of course, you don't want to think that you were, you were taken in by somebody. You don't want to feel like you're picker was off. You don't want to feel like you failed. I understand all of those things. But you know, you deserve to be treated well. You deserve to have honesty, safety, trust, respect, and reliability in a relationship. Everybody does. And you're not going to get that from a hijackal. So in this episode, I want to be really underlying how to unhook. Because It'll only get worse if you don't unhook. So let me give you some guidelines for unhooking. Okay, the first thing is educate yourself. Now I've given you a ton of materials. You want to learn about their traits, their patterns, their cycles, their behaviors, so that you step back enough to say, and there it goes again, and there it goes again, and you know what it is. You know what it is, it's hijackal behavior. And you know, I, when I created the term and trademarked the term hijackal, I did it because we needed a term that wasn't a clinical definition. It is a group of those behaviors and cycles and patterns and traits that recurs and becomes somewhat predictable. And that's the hijackal, that's the way they behave. So I've given you a ton of things, I've written books about it. You can find them on Amazon. Just put my name in. Escaping the Hijackal Trap or The Hijackal Trap. Or you can get my free ebook, which is How to Spot a Hijackal. So if you don't know or you're wondering, just listening to this, am I with one? You can quickly find out it's free. Just go to hijackals.com and you spell that hijack, A L S dot com. So that's there for you. And then there are uh, my four relationship checklists, they're also free. So you can go and get those too. And, and then enjoy taking those and figuring it all out um, 
from the results that you get from there. Uh, also, of course, the podcast and the YouTube. But there are lots of people with lots of great books and lots of good broadcasts. Um, just educate yourself. And every time you hear something, you know, say, oh, that does happen. Or no, that's never happened. But be honest with yourself. Don't find yourself trying to cover up for them. Don't be doing that. So it becomes really important to educate yourself and educate yourself very purposefully, very purposefully, so that you start seeing the repeating patterns. And after, and yes, here, I'll put it up for you. You can find the four checklists, the free ones, at relationshipchecklists.com. So very easy to remember, relationshipchecklist.com. So let's move on. What's the second way that you can use to unhook? Stop enabling. I know it sounds so easy, just two words, and it's such a big task. I understand that completely. Um, but <clears throat> you think that you're being compassionate, but you may be enabling. So let me read you my personal definition of enabling. It's when you usually step in to fix, solve, excuse, rationalize, justify, or here's the big one, make the consequences go away for the poor choices of others. Now really let that settle in because you really have to understand enabling is when you usually step in to fix, solve, excuse, rationalize, justify, or make the consequences go away for the poor choices of others. Are you doing that? Are you enabling someone? Are you enabling them to stay in patterns that hurt you? Are you condoning their behavior by your silence? I know it's really hard to speak up to a hijackle and don't go poking them. It never goes well. But you do need to say something on your own behalf. So you want to stop enabling them. And that means that you have to see the poor choices that they're making. Not try and whitewash them and make them go away, but see the poor choices they're making. And maybe see how you rationalize their behavior. Maybe you even blame yourself because heaven knows the hijackle blames you for everything. Maybe you've taken that on and now you're blaming yourself. Um, <clears throat> and do you take too much fault on yourself? You know, probably all that is not your fault, but the hijackle will make everything your fault. The weather and the IRS and everything will be your fault. Um, you know that that's how it rolls. And they just put everything on you. So stop enabling them. Stop making excuses for them. S just don't do that. Just hand over mouth. Don't do it. They may sit back and notice, but don't be surprised if they don't notice at all because they're very, very busy in their own thoughts. <laughs> they are unfortunately not thinking about you as much as you hope they are. And then <clears throat> number three, to unhook, be quietly and gen genuinely assertive. Now, in the last episode, I was talking about using the PWR and I, I'm want you to also practice that. But when you are being assertive, speak only about yourself, not about the other person. Just speak about how things go for you in the personal weather report. So <clears throat> you have that right to do that, to say what you think, feel, need, and want, prefer, remember, as long as you do not mention another human by name or pronoun. You have that right. And in this one of expressing yourself, it's kind of partially number three and number four, because you want to express yourself genuinely and neutrally. You don't want to make a big scene. You just want to be able to say, actually, that's not true. Or that's not the way I remember it. Or I don't feel that way, actually, when they try to gaslight you and tell you how you feel or what you think or what you need to be able to quietly and genuinely be assertive. 
and say, actually, no, that's not what I feel. I'm happy to tell you if you ask. And you start learning to take back some space because that is absolutely important. They want to marginalize you and isolate you and push you over so that you have this much space and they have this much. And so they'll do it in that way. And you need to take it back. You need to take back some space. And one of the ways that you can do that is be by being quietly, genuinely, and neutrally assertive. You know, <clears throat> no, that's not the way I remember it. No, actually, you know, I I want something different than that. And just get in the habit of doing that without a whole lot of emotion. Just be straightforward. Very important. And then go on to number four, practicing the personal weather report. That the personal weather report is absolutely something to master for all aspects of your life. I created it about 28 years ago or so because you are an expert on you. You need to spend time with you to know what you think, feel, need, want, prefer, remember, desire, want to create, whatever it is. But you have to spend time with yourself. And in order to do that, that means you're not devoting that time to the hijackle. So they don't like that. They want you to be like on your toes all the time and that they want to be creating it so that you don't have that time to yourself. So you need to take that back. Know what you think, feel, need, and want, and be able to express it. And that's all you're doing in a personal weather report is saying, you know, I feel disrespected right now. You don't know, fill in the blanks for them. I feel disrespected right now. And then leave some silence. That's you giving a re weather report on what's going on in here. And you have every right to do that. Now, the hijackal isn't interested and they don't want to hear it, but you are going to move in a direction of being empowered. I'm writing a new book right now. It's called Emerging Empowered, so that I give you all the tools to emerge from a toxic relationship empowered and to move on. And, uh, you know, hopefully that book will be out by the fall or the towards the end of the year and it'll have a course that goes with it as well so you want to be emerging empowered and the things i'm giving you in this episode will help you with that these are ground zero tactics and strategies to put in place so that you can use the personal weather report um, also there are three videos i'll put them in the show notes on my youtube channel that deal with the personal weather report it's uh, in detail. You can find it in my book, Kaizen for Couples, and that's always available on Amazon as a print book or a download. So you can go to Amazon and find Kaizen for Couples, and that's spelled K-A-I-Z-E-N, Japanese word, just in case you don't know it, Kaizen for Couples. And that will help you understand chapters six and seven, how to give a personal weather report. And the seventh chapter is how to respond to someone else's personal weather report. So find that at kaizenforcouples.com or on Amazon. But that's the name of the book. So this is important for us to, to consider how we put these things in place. So we're going to stop enabling. We're going to be quietly and genuinely assertive. And then we're going to practice the personal weather report. Now, the next piece of that puzzle is to step back and take stock. Because we can get really caught up in everything and, and the anxiety gets higher and we're walking on eggshells, we're fearful, we're hypervigilant, we're looking over our shoulder, what, are, what do they want, where are they, what are they thinking, what are they going to find fault with next? So you have to step back and say, wow, what's going on here? How does it fit with my values? to spend some time with you to know what your values are. Are you actually living a life that's based in your values? Or is all your time and energy spent dancing while the hijacko shoots at your feet? You know, that's a big thing. Are you expressing yourself fully? Do you have an opportunity to do that? When is the last time you thought, what do you want? 
You know, these are things to notice. What's your vision for your life? Is this your vision for your life? That you are being hijacked by a hijackal? I don't think you set out for that. That wasn't how you thought you were going to go. So you need to step back and assess, you know, are you living your beliefs? Are you living your purpose? Are you able to follow a calling? Are you giving to the world and getting from the world what you really hoped you would? You know, you're important and you matter. So take the time with yourself to say, have I lost sight of myself in this relationship? Am I so busy trying to appease and second guess a hijackal that I've lost sight of who I am and what I want in this life? Because that's a big thing. And if you're going to unhook, you need to really understand that that may be something you've lost sight of, that you no longer know which direction you're going and why. And you don't want to be doing that. You're important. And you have things to do in this life. And you want to live from your values and your vision of your life and create a shared vision of life with your partner. A hijackal doesn't want to share much. They want to take a lot, but they don't share much. You've probably noticed that. So that's very important. And then number six, assess the three must-haves of a healthy adult relationship from episode 115. <laughs> you know, that's basic to the relationship. Where's the equality? Where's the reciprocity? And where is the mutuality? It's going to be missing in a relationship with a hijackal or very little of it shows up and usually only shows up when they really, really want something. So in this assessment piece, you need to look and see where is their equality in this relationship? Where is their reciprocity that I can count on, that we have each other's back, that we know that we can count on each other to do for each other or be there for each other or support each other? And where's the mutuality, that wonderful stuff that comes from building emotional intimacy that they know us so well and we know them so well that we know how to support them, how to, how to get for them what they want for themselves by supporting them to get it. And being in their corner and walking by their side and having their back. Do you have that with the hijackal? No. No, you don't have that. You have glimmers of it that show up and hook you on the hope that it's there, but you don't have it all the time. And it needs to be there all the time. That's what makes a healthy relationship. So you want to assess where is the equality, reciprocity, and mutuality. And then you need to give up being hooked on hope that that person that you fell in love with, that person who swept you off your feet or you swept off their feet or however that sweeping occurred, you need to give up being hooked on hope that Prince or Princess Charming was real. No, no. They weren't real. That was an act to get you. In Escaping the Hijackal Trap, you can get that book on Amazon, I talk about a whole chapter called The Gotcha Factor. And The Gotcha Factor is I'll do anything I need to do as quickly as possible to get you so that I don't have to keep up the act anymore and I can go back to my hijackal ways. And I know that I can now and again just do a little bit of love bombing and you'll go back and say, oh, there's that person that I met. There's that wonderful person. And that little tiny dribble of breadcrumbs, you will be fed to your starving self and you will think that you've had a meal and you haven't. So you need to give up being hooked on the fact that Prince or Princess Charming is real and is coming back and realize that Prince and Princess Harming are here to stay. And you can tell that by their hijackal ways. So it is a big wake-up call. It really is. And I hope that by putting all these things in one podcast episode tonight, that compressing them all together helps you see the picture that this is something that you need to change. 
Now, always change from the inside out if you possibly can. You've heard me say before, unless there's physical or sexual abuse, you have time to be emerging empowered. We can work together. We can do all of that. And you can have time with me. Just go to beaclient.com and use my new client uh, introductory one hour session, beaclient.com. We can work together to figure things out, but it's really important that in this moment, you start to see all those things that are there. The disappointment that the person that you thought was real is not real. Allow yourself to have that disappointment and give up waiting for the moment or two when they really want something and they go back to being that person who love bombed you in the beginning. Don't let yourself be lulled by hope. Don't let yourself be hooked on hope. And don't allow yourself to unsee what you saw during this podcast. Really important because once you've seen it, you can be lulled back into, oh, maybe it'll get better. But I want you to keep your eyes open and don't go back to being hooked on hope. These things are really and truly important. I'm here to help you. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. You find me at For Relationship Help. Everything that I talk about is there. You can search through the website, find the podcast, find the YouTube channel, read the blog, take the tests, all the checklists that are there. Everything is there for you. Until we talk again, be very good to yourself because you matter and you don't need to be treated in any ways that don't demonstrate that you do. Talk soon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, hi, Stella. Hi, Jess. Jess says, clearly I have family value issues and wanted love. Instead, I lost time and lots of money on the poor choice on my part. Oh, you have so much company there, Jess. I'm sure that if we could hear everybody in the world responding to that, you would have a resounding clap right now, a big round of applause because we do. Because we believe in people and we want to believe in love, we can lose ourselves in a hijackal and they count on it. They truly do. And you will lose time and you will lose money and you may lose some self-esteem and you'll definitely lose some sleep. So I'm sorry that happened to you. But by contrast, now you know that that's something you probably don't ever want again, right? So any questions that you have, be sure that you put them in the chat now. Be, no matter if it relates to what I was talking about tonight, you can ask any questions because there's a delay between when you hit send and when I see them. So put them in there now. Hi, Maria. Leo says, my mother is a hijackal with constant criticism. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? Because the very person who should be loving you and supporting you and finding the good in you and bringing it forward, right from before you even had language, already was critical. And I'm sure, Leo, that you find that it affects your relationships with people and your relationship with yourself a lot. So I hope you'll get some help because once you realize that, I did write an article. It's um, on my website. You can go to forrelationshiphelp.com and find it. There's a search bar there, so you can put it in. And it's called um, 12 Lies Your Mar Narcissistic Mother Told You About Yourself. And it's a good thing to read that because if you had a hijackal parent, it doesn't matter if it was the mother or the father, but if you had a hijackal parent, you're going to read that and go, oh yes, all those things were told to me or inferred. And then you can see that was her stuff, not anything about you. That was her stuff. And you can do some work to make sure that that stays over there in her column and doesn't bleed over into yours anymore, Leo. Hi, Stella. I told the hijackal, you're disrespecting me. And he would say, I'm treating you the way I'm being treated. 
I was kind and it was word salad. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's just break that down. Um, you know, I did an episode on blame shifting. That's when you say this doesn't work for me and and you're talking to the hijackal and you say, you know, this this happens and it doesn't work for me. And they turn it around and they say, I don't do that, but you do it all the time. So yes, I mean, as soon as you as you tell a hijackal anything, they're going to turn it around and put it on you. So that's not surprising. But you said that I'm treating you this way because you're treating me that way. He says, well, playing the victim is a covert hijackal's way of being in the world. They're poor me. It's awful. Everybody's on my case. Nobody likes me. And all that kind of thing runs down. So it's not surprising that he played the victim and and you had that to deal with. But when you said the word salad, I just want to say a few words about that because that's what they do. They say a whole lot of words, but if you were to write them down and look at them, they wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. There would be a lot of air in there, a lot of holes in there, but somehow just keeping the emotion going and pummeling you with words, they think will overtake you and they will win. And that's their word salad. Then Stella says, trying to fix that relationship made me feel despair. There seemed no solution except the hijackal's demands or he was going to discard me. Here's the important sentence. Stella says, this was my relationship. Yay, it's not your relationship any longer. And that's so good. So very, very good. Hi, Nina. You have helped me so much. I'm glad. I'm glad. And we should talk soon because you... Um, I can help you some more. <laughs> Great session, a Facebook user says, a nameless Facebook us user. I'm glad it was good for you. It was good for me too. <laughs> All right. Another Facebook user says, what do you do if someone is always getting mad when you ask a question and gives you the silent treatment? Two parts. When someone's always getting mad, you observe that and you don't enter into the argument with them. Now that's a big thing to learn because you want to defend yourself. You want to respond and you don't want to be the one who gives the silent treatment. But when they are getting mad, you, they go into a place of having limited brain capacity. <laughs> you know, I think I mentioned this uh, in another broadcast that when any of us go into anger, which is an arousal in the body, it's same kind of arousal as when we see a bear, same kind of arousal if we're a kid on Christmas morning. But what it does is it says to the body, alert, 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 you know, something's happening, something's happening. And when that happens, um, the, the blood goes to the heart and lungs to protect us. And it, that means it comes from the appendages. And we often don't think of our head as an appendage, but it is. And that's an important thing to know. So that means that we have diminished capacity to think when we're upset. And so we want to remember that that is going on. And so when someone is angry, they have a diminished capacity and they think that they're powerful and righteous and so you just have to really stick with that, right? And and realize that um, don't 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 enter into the argument with them. It won't help. Really won't help. And the second half of your question is they give you the silent treatment. Well, here's a big piece of good information. When somebody gives you the silent treatment, enjoy the silence. Just enjoy the silence. Oh, okay, the noise has stopped. The last thing you want to do is to try to cajole them into talking. That's what they want. They are trying to get you to give them power. Do not do it. When they give you the silent treatment, accept that they have stopped speaking and that is their right. Now, when you're dealing with a hijackal, they are absolutely figure by giving you the silent treatment that they're withholding their glorious selves from you and that you really care. 
And if you find that you really, really care, you may need some help because if someone withholds themselves from you, observe what they're doing. Don't get all involved in what you might do. You know, they are withholding themselves from you. Okay, I don't like that. I don't like that behavior. I don't like people who do that to me. You observe that rather than think, oh, what have I done? What have I done? How can I make them happy? How can I change? What can I promise them? Right? So when somebody gives you the silent treatment, just honor their adult nature of deciding not to speak anymore. And if they're a hijackal, they'll up the ante or they'll start speaking to you in derogatory terms. But that's a big thing when you're dealing with a hijackal. When they fall silent, enjoy the silence. Okay, I hope that helps. Maria says, my siblings would say, you have high standards and expectations. Good. When I would ask to have reciprocity in our relationship, expecting me to lower my standards so I would continue to accept crumbs. Exactly. You know, I, I don't know who said it, but someone I read somewhere, it said, a person who says they'll meet you halfway thinks they're standing on the halfway line. <laughs> and that's pretty much what you just said there, that they don't want reciprocity. They want you to give to them. So you have high standards and expectations. The answer is, yes, I do. And if they want you to change that, that's a request that you don't have to have anything to do with. You don't have to meet it. But you're absolutely right that they're expecting you to go to them and they are not coming towards you. So these are important things to know. So that's the end of the comments and the questions here. So I'm going to leave about 30 seconds so that you can hit send if you have a question for me on anything that has to do with hijackles and toxic relationships. And that will help us continue the conversation. Otherwise, we just take it organically. And when the conversation is over and there are no more questions, then we just call it a night. So Maria says, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that you do. So <clears throat> all of these things that I've talked about tonight are really important because we really do get hooked on hope that the person we fell in love with is the real person. And we keep thinking that if we make ourselves into a pretzel, they will magically reappear. They won't. The only time that they will magically reappear is when they want something from you and they don't think they're going to get it by just asking. So they put on the chameleon again and they become that prince or princess charming. And it's all fake. It really is just an act. And it's heartbreaking to know that, but it is the truth. As Stella says, Dr. Shaler, does it take years to heal? It does, to finally heal. But, you know, give yourself a year or so, get some help. If you're coming out of a hijackal relationship, the fastest way to heal is to get some help focused on, you know, work with somebody like myself who specializes in this area. I have clients all over the world, and I know this is very generalized behavior. So if you want to heal in the best way, get some help because there are misplaced things in the mindset that need to be unearthed and uncovered and replaced or erased. And someone can help you with that. Now you will heal from, you know, the sort of being beaten down part. Time can help with that. But it's your inner dialogue that really matters. And that's what you need help with. And it will take a while to heal. One of the questions I'm asked so frequently is, after I get out of the relationship with the hijackal and the dust kind of settles, how soon can I date? And I always say, give yourself at least one journey around the sun, one full year before you enter into dating. Because you need to heal yourself, you need to build back trust in yourself. And if you go out wounded or feeling less than or being needy or really wanting a companion or all of those things, 
your ability to choose is not in good shape until you've done some healing. And so I, I, I know that sounds awful. You'd really like to be in a relationship and have some joy and all, and I want that for you. But really give yourself time to become your own best friend before you go looking for someone else to be your best friend. Really, really important. So I'm glad you asked that question, Stella. Well, everybody, it's that time. Thank you so much for being with me. Please invite your friends to join us. I'm here most Monday nights at 7 o'clock. Subscribe or like the Facebook page so that then you will get a notice each time in the afternoon on Mondays to know what the topic is. Feel free to invite your friends to come along. Bring your questions, even if it has nothing to do with it. Uh, the tonight's topic, you are always free to ask your questions. Maria says it's really eye-opening when you do see who they really are and then you don't have a desire to be close to them. Yes, well said, Maria. It is. That's why I said, don't close your eyes again after all the things that I said to you tonight. Keep those eyes open. And Bibi says, when someone gives you the silent treatment, they want to control and punish you. It's just mean and cruel behavior on their part. Yes, it is. Of course, they're looking to have power over you, and they want you to be the one who goes running after them and say, please, please, please talk to me. I'll do anything. I can't stand the silent treatment. And that's why I invite you to enjoy the silence when someone gives you this silent treatment. <laughs> so very important, Bibi, to do that. Otherwise, there will always be inequity in the relationship. There will always be more give than take on your part. And they will do all of the taking. So very, very important. So Monday night, see you next week, perhaps. In the meantime, take very good care of yourself because you do matter. Treat yourself accordingly. Talk soon.